In the past few months, we've seen a bunch of different project rebalancing. We're finally getting to like the really juicy stuff. So I'm going to read and then we'll discuss and then I'll read again. We'll discuss and I'll read. So each like segment. So let's just get right into it. Our third project rebalance blog focuses on item adjustments and other combat changes. Project rebalance, combat and item changes. Anxiously eyeballing your bank, wondering what project, uh, what changes project rebalance will bring to your favorite bits of gear. Well, wonder no longer because here's the blog you've all been waiting for. Today we're talking buffs, debuffs, and other changes to various bits of combat gear. And just to round things out, we've also got some more combat changes for you. Before we move on, just like the last Project Rebalance blog, this one coincides with an open beta that you can take part in by jumping into any of the beta worlds once they're live today, which should be shortly after this post. These worlds feature all of the changes from the NPC Defense Changes blogs and all of the changes from today's blog too. So jump in and take a look. Item adjustments. Before we get started, please note that the Tomes of Fire and Water will be adjusted as per our previous uh, Project Rebalance blog, so we won't be rehashing those changes here. First, we'll look at perhaps the most anticipated or dreaded set of changes focused primarily on magic gear progression. Magic gear and the occult necklace. The occult necklace does an astronomical amount of lifting for magic's damage output. And to make a long story short, we think an item this powerful should set you back more than a mere 800k. For example, let's assume two players both have 99 magic and a fancy bit of barrows. Player A equips an occult necklace for 800k and calls it a day. Player B equips the ancestral set, a magus ring, eternal boots, gotta rock that fashion scape, and turns on augury, which sets them back a whopping 454 million GP. Now, who do you think kills the melee barrows brother fastest? If you answered player A, you're correct, and we hope you understand why this situation seems more than a little unfair. It's time to break the occult necklace's stranglehold on magic's gear progression. There are already too many occult necklaces out there for us to reasonably make them less common, making them harder to get will just punish iron players who have to climb all the way to 93 Slayer for this all-important unlock. In addition, the occult necklace is so powerful that other gear upgrades become less exciting by comparison. We plan to kill two birds with one stone by re redistributing the occult's necklace stats around other magic gear. So the occult necklace is basically being reduced from 10%, which it always has been since the introduction of the item, to 4%, which is actually wild because I remember saying I wanted to maybe see it go down to like 6%, and they're actually going lower than that, which I'm very happy about, honestly. And the ancestral robes are going from 2% to 4% each, which is a literal double. Uh, Virtus robes are going from 1% to 2%, infinity robes from 0 to 1, Dagon High robes from 0 to 1, and Third Age is going from 0 to 1 as well, and Augury is going from 0 to 4%, and then there's a note saying Tumican Shadow doesn't multiply accuracy or damage bonuses gained from prayer, so it's going to remain at 4% rather than at 12%. So let's discuss. BC Guppy, you're here with me right now. What are your whole thoughts on that? <laughs> what you, I, know I just oh. dominated that first few minutes just breaking well, it all down, but I want to hear well, your thoughts. Well, see, see here's, here's the thing, okay? If this is going to be a separate YouTube video, I got to reintroduce myself because... <laughs> Like, there's going to be people who watch this and they're like, oh, who is this dude that's just talking? Uh, I'm VC Guppy, been on the Save A cast several times. So I'm pretty passionate about the game and I've had a long history of playing around with DPS calculators and all that. So that is why I'm here with you fellas today to discuss this cool new blog post that released just literally today. Like, uh, this is cool that this coincides with the, the Save A cast that I'm doing right now. Uh, go check that out on Spotify, YouTube, et cetera, et cetera. Hell it's yeah. going to be worth listening to anyway <laughs> there's so, people that are listening to this full cast without seeing this segment and they're like what the hell are you guys talking about yeah exactly that's <laughs> why i wanted to reintroduce it. myself it's perfect, so though. so yeah um the occult like people have been talking about the occult forever like oh 10 percent mage damage and it's just like a random drop from just a a pop mob where you just need 93 slayer and it's a one in five total not very rare and you just barrage these things like for crazy good slayer xp it, it, yeah, you really don't want items like the Occult Necklace where it's super easy to obtain and yet it's doing so much for you. I, I think items that are really strong or that are giving you a lot in certain places should be coming from more difficult parts of the game for sure. But there should still be, you know, like middle grounds, right? Like where we have like Barrows and now we have Perilous Moons where there's still like mid-game gear that's pretty accessible. But 
the occult necklace has been best in slot for what feels like over 10 years now. And it's been doing more for magic than any other individual piece in the game. Like, well, and maybe, maybe uh shadow of Tumakin or Tumakin shadow is a bit different, but anyway, so yeah. No, occult, I mean, that li- the occult, with, the occult one is 30% with the, with Tumakin shadow. <laughs> so okay, yeah, I, the occult is I still listened, carrying I listened, that. I listened to the cast with Travis. Yeah. And and you guys were talking about how an occult gives the shadow eleven maxes, dude. I died <laughs> laughing when I heard that because it's so true. Like, dude, you go from a max of fifty five to sixty six. Yes. If you and miss what, if you miss that necklace, switch, you yeah, you're rare. trolling. So yeah, the occult being reduced makes sense. I'm surprised they reduce it so much though. I thought it would just be like a flat five percent, but no, they reduce it from ten to four. That's a bit more than I thought, but they're putting the mage damage on ancestral and virtus stuff that you know it's it's high end content rewards so it makes sense for sure what is interesting is that they're putting 1% on the other ones so infinity dagger high and and even third age mage that that really surprised me yeah um but but it's only 1% like it feels like it does nothing i kind of almost want to make a point here where all these tiny like one percents and two percents on all this gear it's like not really very much it'd be better if if like using a trident just naked was weaker than it is currently but the trade-off being that mage gear is giving you bigger percentages so you'll see like you'll actually be able to tangibly think about how much like a five percent or a ten percent bonus is giving you because one percent that that's like that's so small to me, but I'm, I'm, I guess I'm not really going to ask for the mage skill in general to be reworked from the ground up because it's probably out of the scope it is. of what could be done. Yeah. So what they're doing here is good. It's for sure a step in the right direction. Um, Occult needed to be nerfed. And I feel like irons that don't have 93 slayer yet are going to feel less like they're trolling when they're doing mage without an occult. Because Ocult is just so huge. It, it, it felt so bad to do Zora without an Ocult back on my old Iron. And then I put on the Ocult and I'm just doing so much more damage after getting 93 Slayer. So, yeah, I like this this progression change for sure. There's definitely... It's going to be wonky for... I mean, I, I was reading some of the Twitter replies to this whole post that Jagex posted on Twitter. Um, or X. I, should, I gotta start getting used to that. Jesus Christ. Um, I'm still calling it Twitter, dude. I'll call it X from time to time, though, because <laughs> I, I think it's funny. Yeah. But they, so there was some people, mainly in the PK scene. I know uh, Peter Spam wasn't super happy about some of the changes. Um, a cult is a huge, has always been a huge item for any sort of account that's wanting to mage out in the wilderness and if you can't afford the whole ancestral you're just getting a huge debuff basically from this change but i still think it's completely healthy for the game it's going to clearly upset some metas and other things but ultimately i think it's for the better health of the game to have these things balanced and what's really cool i'm thinking from an iron man's sort of gear progression uh standpoint is like Going in, getting your 93 Slayer, getting your Occult, and then, you know, going to Chambers or whatever, every single piece of Ancestral is just going to be such a massive upgrade. It's like getting an additional, you know, nerfed Occult. It's just like another Occult, another Occult, another Occult. But again, we're seeing Occults as, you know, only 4% now instead of 10. But that's really cool that every piece of Ancestral is very meaningful. Um, One of the things that's really interesting is you know, we see it could, down here. It's saying, how does this shake up damage wise? It's saying a cult plus full ancestral plus augury. So augury is getting that 4%, which is cool is now 20% magic damage up from 16%. But we have to remember that if you're doing slayer tasks, that slayer helmet doesn't have any. So it's still back to the 16% and you're required to have augury now. Actually, I take it back. It's 18% because, um, what it used to be uh, because the ancestral hat had a two percent and you were using a slayer helm before so technically it actually still is better if you're using augury but it is slightly worse if you're not using augury so augury is very important now i was actually 
I, this might take a lot more like work on their end to implement something like this, but I was really hoping that Augury, on top of having a 4% damage uh, or like magic damage, it would also have a 4% or even higher, maybe just 4% is fully justified, is 4% um, magic negation as well. So incoming magic attacks, if you're praying Augury, actually have a slight damage negation. Now, 4% isn't massive at all, but at least for something like PvP, when people are using Augury against you, it would be cool to be able to pray Augury back and just cancel out that extra damage incoming, just very slightly. And I think it would make it just e even more slightly a more defensive prayer. But again, it's I don't really care that much. I, I don't think it would be that big of a deal regardless. But When it comes to Augury, I kind of wish it was just in line with Piety and rigor where it was just like all the numbers were just identical and mage worked in a very similar way to range where you have like mage strength that isn't in percentages and it's actually just like just strength bonus yeah and it would be it's... more intuitive than all these like damage charts that you see with the trident of the seas and the swamp and the sang and the and tumic and shadow where it has like fixed max hits uh, i i would like to see this as a whole but again i don't really want to ask for the whole mage skill to be reworked even though Ultimately, if it was up to me, I would just completely rework the mage skill in general, where it's more in line with melee and range, where these prayers are doing 20% more damage for all styles, for each style, and just have everything be kind of parallel. But uh, yeah, so I, think, I think yeah. that's probably too difficult. It, it's yeah, not even it's... like it's too difficult, it's just that there we have to remember, like, there are so many players that would just get it would just be, it's almost like a minor form of eoc where it's like jesus christ everything's that's, changed that's true and but isn't people, that the point of project rebalance though to yeah like, they have to they have to go the game? yeah but they have to take little steps like even the steps we think are big are technically very small even the elemental weaknesses and ranged styles that they're that they were um adding like that is something so big, but ultimately when you look at it, it's actually still a pretty small change. That's not shaking too many things up. Um, oh, I, I want to butt in and say one thing about the whole elemental weakness yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, because I'm, I'm not going to get an opportunity to say this again. It's just, I'm just going to really quickly say this, but they added these elemental weaknesses, but I think they should also add elemental strengths where if you're hitting a fire giant with a fire spell it's not doing like the full damage it's it maybe it like heals the fire giant instead or does like super minimal damage i think if they're gonna go the route of having things weak to stuff they should also go the route of having things strong to stuff too uh it would make a lot of sense yeah rather and than that current and, thing and where you're just hitting a fire giant with fire strike the thing is, that does make sense, but I feel like even if Jagex were to see that as being like completely fitting of something like this, them putting that down on a blog post is just going to make things look more overly complicated. So it's something they have to just incrementally add. And they even said that from the get-go. Like they're they're saying in the future they're there's they could still look at monsters and add adjustments here and there over time. But they have to just be so careful with things. They have to be so careful with not saying too much, not adding way too much that's overly complicated. And as soon as there's, you know, fire giants that now, you know, just have resistance to fire spells and stuff like that, which makes perfect sense. As soon as that's in a blog post and there's extra information on that, people are just going to be like, what the fuck is going on? So they have to be so, so careful. EOC, EOC, EOC. <laughs> anyway let's let's continue here yeah okay um so basically this is all shaking up they said you know this is what's going to be happening but let's continue down these changes bring the necklace's power a little more in line with its obtainability so that players can feel themselves getting stronger as they unlock other gear additionally augury now has greater offensive power increasing the value of the arcane prayer scroll we also see new utility for rope sets okay um well i'll just read this just in case which are currently best suited for accounts with defense limitations. We want to see Aram's robe sit in a unique, tankier battle mage niche with defense that outshines other options in exchange for slightly less offensive potential. That is another thing we didn't really talk about was Aram's is not seeing any sort of... I, I would literally be okay if Aram's got a plus 1%. From Can I excel Aram's? 
Yeah, I, I, Aram's is gonna uh, be like legit dog shit. They should make it. They should make it pretty tanky. Like they should really just buff Aram's too, where they're giving it a bunch of defense. Yeah. No, I mean uh, th- this, this is like what I'm saying about like Augury getting a a defense negate or um a magic damage negation effect. Uh, what if what if Aram's had something like that, where like incoming mage attacks, or I guess it wouldn't be mage attacks. Actually, how would that work? Because dude, if you did that. To be that. I can yeah. instantly see people soloing Corp with Aram's on. Yeah, it would it would have yeah. Which wouldn't really make sense because it should be dehyde. So I don't know how they're trying to go about it. I would be okay, honestly, if Aram's had a plus one percent magic damage though on each piece, just so that it's not falling way behind, because it's falling way behind right now. Way behind. <laughs> but I don't know. If they don't make any changes, Aram's gonna just be kind of shit. It does come from Barrows, so... But. Uh, yeah, keep in mind that they're buffing Infinity, Dagenhai, and Third Age. Like, dude, those, those, all those items are very hard to obtain, yeah. so it's very balanced. Aram's is way right. easier by comparison, so... No, I think Aram's is, is fine, but if they want to okay. go with the Maybe just the make it more tanky. Niche, Maybe just, yeah, just make, make it, it more tanky. tanky. Yeah, just make it more tanky. That, that would it, actually be okay. Yeah, that's it. That's, give it a lot of mage defense, too. I would love to see it have a lot of mage defense. I'm, I'm that's the thing that, that I want to see them add a bunch, too. Make it better than Carol's for mage defense, even. Nah, I, I would say keep it... Keep Carol's better, but make this have just right, like just across the board, just add an additional like five or ten defense to every single thing. Like even that alone per piece would just make it somehow fill some sort of niche if you wanted yeah, to. I really give it a little bit of love, uh, like yeah. everything else is getting to, to even know. Well, that makes sense. I'm down for that. Okay. Um, for players with near best in slot setups, these changes buff magic and bring other weapons closer to Tumic and Shadow. Now, this approach still has its issues. Magic has traditionally struggled to keep up with other corners of the combat triangle and PvP, and these changes make it even weaker, especially for one defense accounts. We think we could resolve these issues with a blighted necklace slot and a little more damage on Elder Chaos Druid robes, but we'd like to hear your feedback first. Yeah, that would be cool. Elder Chaos Druid robes, if those had 1%, I'm down because those are literally have like no defense to it and the people that are wearing them are one defense accounts anyway so i actually am not against having those have one percent as well um because there are the drawbacks of it's just literally like wearing paper speaking Uh speaking of we'd also like to hear about uh other bits of gear that deserve a little boost we can even work in increments of 0.5 percent if it helps i would just stick with one percent personally that's my take um so the last bit on this before we cover soul reaper axe we're committed to bringing the occult necklace down a notch but remember that it will still remain the best in slot necklace offering for any magic setup and will likely remain affordable that's a good deal as far as rebalances go any final thoughts thoughts you have on that before we cover soul reaper i will laugh if they pitch raids for rewards and it's just going to be the pre-nerf occult (laughs) (laughs) that will be so funny because you can see it coming like we we are we are due for a new mage ammy yeah i mean we're we're due for amulets and um glove switches across the board technically except i mean i I, you know zari maybe not but yeah De- necklaces especially yeah i think we are okay soul reaper axe this i'm pretty excited about this one moving swiftly on this hard hitting slash weapon capable of dishing out some serious damage if you're willing to go through the frustrating process of bringing out its true potential we don't plan to increase the soul reaper's damage directly here's what we'll be doing instead stacks will no longer be lost instantly upon switching weapon stacks will also start decrementing is that okay uh after 20 ticks 12 seconds without attacking up from 10 ticks six seconds so it's doubling the time before it starts decrementing is that even a uh, why does that not sound like even right decrement decrement decrementing decrement i don't know it's such a weird i think it's decrementing say, oh decrementing decrementing uh, yeah <laughs> Um, uh, whatever it, make, it makes sense it's just i've never like said that word it's weird okay uh when stacks naturally degrade they'll heal you for the damage you took while building those stacks up so you probably haven't even used the soul reaper axe have you guppy oh and looking at it as it currently is it's just like why why where would i use this thing yeah. other than i guess people are using it for dorvis it's best in slot there apparently but yeah, yeah i've never 
<laughs> Dude, I I pulled up the wiki page for Soul Reaper Axe just looking at it because I don't know what the hell this thing actually does. I've never tried it. So I just know that it's kind of bad when you have a scythe. This gets me very excited because these are the exact changes it needed. Personally, I wasn't even against them just doing a full-on redo of everything about it. Like not even making it do the stack thing, just completely going back to the drawing board and deciding something else. But I think this fits really nicely because this basically solves all the annoying issues. The fact that you can switch weapons and you're not going to lose your stack. That's amazing. You have 20 ticks to keep hitting, to keep your stacks. And if you don't hit in time, it will just heal you the eight damage you took from hitting in the first place. So j just as um, just kind of illustrating this because you haven't used it and for those that haven't used it, like doing a Slayer task with a Soul Reaper Axe, if you're just mailing a task, I'm one of those weirdos, you know, that goes around the game doing Konar Slayer mailing tasks. But it's a really fun weapon to use for tasks because you're just whacking stuff with Slayer Helm and everything. And... One of the most annoying things, though, is if you're trying to go AFK and trying to, like, auto-retaliate your tasks and, like, using, a, like, a cannon or something was hitting stuff and then slowly passive, just losing your stacks passively and not regaining that uh, HP. So if you don't bring food or anything, like I normally do, I'm just bringing prayer pots, eventually you're going to see yourself after several minutes at very low HP and not being able to regain your stack again because you've just slowly been losing your HP from losing stacks and not regaining that eight. So everything they're doing here looks phenomenal and it's actually gonna make this Soul Reaper X like worthwhile. So I'm I'm really excited about it. So not much more to really say. I'll read this thing and then if we have anything else to add beforehand. Um, effectively, we're making stacks easier to maintain and removing the overly punishing stack drain when switching weapons. This does indirectly buff the Soul Reaper's damage output, but it also means you'll no longer run out of stacks while waiting during intermission phases in some boss fights, such as Verzik's transition between phases 2 and 3. We've seen more suggestions regarding the Soul Reaper Axe, but right now our focus is on improving its usability and ensuring it doesn't lose power every time you switch gear. Perfect. You have any looks good yeah uh hopefully it gets more use out of this it, it's it's very difficult to obtain from scratch this thing is a long grind to get and it's a fulfilling grind too because you have to do four different bosses each with their own little things you have to learn about it and you can't even like like you have to build this thing with untradeable components yep that's that's rough it should be very, very good for how difficult it is to obtain. And yeah, well, really, there's not much else to say other than that. This thing should be used in a lot of places. One of the really cool things, I talked about this, you may have heard it on a cast or one of the rambles I was talking about it on, uh, is kind of this niche um, utility of it where if you have a full five stack, you literally have a full... 40 you have an instant 40 heal potion basically as a as a um a spec so in a dire situation i was i was thinking of like killing duke because you're you're now killing duke when you do the awakened duke fight if you were to use a soul reaper axe you can basically maintain this panic 40 heal button so uh -huh. you know you have like a, a shark and a karambwan you can panic eat 40 or 38 right there but you can do a combination of like a shark <laughs> karambwan and a heel and you're just back up to full fucking hp like if you really needed that you know you have a bring a phoenix necklace as well like boom like you're it's really in those dire situations having a soul raper axe as a handy insta 40 heel is really really useful but it's it has very limited um very limited use cases for that, but it's still cool. Just, it's like you're clicking an ambrosia with a special Literally. attack. Like that's that's actually what it's not what it's it what it is. I mean, especially in even if you didn't have any food, like imagine you just had a Phoenix necklace and this 40 stack heal. Like a Phoenix necklace right, heal is like 29 or something. You're healing like right. 79 HP just boom. Okay, well, I want to know what the maximum amount you can heal is. It's like what it would it be? Angler into like antelope, tick, brew, karambwan, soul reaper axe spec, and the phoenix necklace proccing all at the same time. How much and would that heal? And a blood fear. And a and and you're oh, and you're hitting and you're hitting. Oh yeah, my yeah. god! 
Holy moly. I want to see it. I want someone to, to make that a reality, please. I want to see someone go from 1 HP to, to like 115 or 121. Dude, it would be way higher than that. Yeah, it would just... Yeah, you would just you would just launch. I mean, oh my if we goodness, ever get if, so funny. One, one of these days we're gonna honestly one of the a, a cool mega rare reward doesn't even need to be mega rare, but in the future some sort of reward would be some HP boosting stuff. Didn't Torva used to do that back in the day? I think not just Torva, but also Pernix and Virtus did the same thing. Mm. I think. Yeah, it's, it's I think, been so I long. I, I wasn't there for it, but I, that sounds right. Uh, I'm not against that. It, it, it's interesting. Uh, I'm not going to go against it. I, I'm kind of neutral opinion on that. It's an interesting concept. I know PvPers are going to absolutely hate that. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, we're able to just... I don't know. I don't know if it would be the worst thing. Because people already have those kind of, like, honor fights anyway, where it's like, come on, dude, stop safing up so much. But you're right. In NHing. <laughs> In NHing, people will just eat up. But the thing is, we're, we have weapons that are so powerful nowadays, and they're only going to get more powerful over time. So in the future, we also need to have that HP increase, I feel like, inevitably. Anyway, let's continue on with Elder Maul. This is interesting. The biggest change, by the way. This is the absolute biggest change in the whole blog. Really? Let's, let's see it. Yes, okay. read, read it. This thunderous crush weapon is a mega rare drop from Chambers of Zarek, but its PVM use cases are few and far between, barring a brief moment in the sun when you all discovered the 1-0 to method for taking down the Great Ulm's melee hand. It's hard to bring a slow, hard-hitting weapon in line with other main hand weapons or options. Because our combat system rewards speed, 5-tick weapons like the Scythe of Viter and the Twisted Bow do a fantastic job, but an even slower 6-tick weapon requires a max hit that would level half of Varrock. <laughs> what makes the Elder Maul great <laughs> is that feeling of bringing this behemoth weapon down on an opponent and softening them up for future blows while they're still reeling from the impact. Initially, we thought about shaving off a little defense for each swing, but struggled to get it into a place where it wasn't either totally broken or outperformed by the Dragon Warhammer. Instead, we're giving it a special attack worth 50% of special attack energy, which reduces your target's defense by 35%. This makes it a better defense reduction option than the Dragon Warhammer, and also frees up an inventory slot for scenarios where you'd otherwise use two-handed weapons. For example, if you'd only be using the Scythe of Viter and the Dragon Warhammer in a raid, you'll be able to skip out on an Avernic Defender and bring something else in that extra slot. Given the prevalence of defense reduction in many endgame encounters, we feel like this should give you more reason to bring the Elder Maul out of the bank every once in a while. Do let us know what you think if you could use if it could use a, a little something more. What are your thoughts? It's better than the Dragon Warhammer in every way. It's thirty five percent instead of thirty. It's two handed. Do you have any idea how sick it is to do wait, TOB and wait, 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 not wait, wait. have any? A I, defender. I need to say one thing though. Is it better because the the Dragon Warhammer doesn't the spec also have a fifty percent accuracy increase? Is that no? It does not. It doesn't. It has fifty percent damage. That's it. No accuracy. Oh, I so the Elder Maul accuracy. is more accurate and it's draining more. It is wow. a strict upgrade, wow. and you don't have to bring a Vernick. Do you have? any idea how sick it is to not just the little quality of life to yep. not have to drop an angler fish right before it's maiden amazing. no it's amazing to say, dude it's so good it's that it's alone is, is worth 100 mil in my eyes just not having to bring that's why i like to bring bgs into top because then i could just get bringing a vernick and just bring only two-handed stuff yeah that's amazing that's this is this is incredible um Although I, I do wish that just like hitting things with the Elder Maul was a bit better, but uh, I actually this, have this a change point. by itself is going to make it crazy good. I actually have a point on that on the next section, which is Inquisitors, because I was thinking that there's a reason why. Well, we'll we'll talk about it in a second, but um, I think it could be cool if Inquisitors could use uh the Elder Maul as the seven point five percent damage as well. Um. You're never you're never going to use it anyway, so it's not like it's going to make that big of a difference. But you know, it could be pretty cool to have that uh, effect with full inquisitors and an elder mall. But we'll talk about that. So I'm cool with this. I I really like this. I think it's cool that the dragon warhammer is like the little brother of it now. 
and which is good because you're comparing a raid reward from like a very 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 historically shitty grind of just killing shamans over and over again yeah. on an iron for yeah. a necessary item yeah no i think this is really nice you can skip the Warhammer grind on an iron now. You get BGS from Bandos, use that for for chambers, and then you get, well, you hope for the Elder Maul. This is very rare, but uh, anyway, yeah, the, it completely invalidates the Dragon Warhammer. Just just use an Elder Maul, yep. it's better in every way. There's, oh. there's no longer a reason to use the Warhammer Dude. unless you think it's more accessible. Yeah, uh, this is going to be huge, and it's going to be really amazing against just anything because uh, i'm even thinking like well i don't i don't know what what you're supposed to be using at duke like if you're just grinding out duke long term not trying to get a, a, a pb or anything would you bring i'm pretty sure you'd bring an elder mall at this point unless you BGS shouldn't even you shouldn't even think i don't even think you should be thinking about where you would use elder mall and just think that it just replaces the warhammer everywhere because really this five percent extra defense reduction compared to hammer is not that substantial and the accuracy difference from a dragon war hammer and an Avernic isn't also not that substantial just just see it as just it's better than the warhammer now you don't even have to think about where it's good we already know that the dragon war hammer is ubiquitous and where it's getting used already yep <laughs> it's a very very healthy item so yeah don't even think about like duke or like maybe the small is going to start beating mm -hmm. BGS where BGS is already being used. It maybe there's like one spot where this mall will be just minusculely better than a BGS on average after someone does a thousand calculations on and, and simulations. Just just uh, just see this as a better Warhammer. That's all you really need to see. All right, let's read this section on Inquisitor's armor. The Inquisitor's armor set and mace are a crush-focused set dropped by the Nightmare and Fasani's Nightmare. Each piece of the armor set boosts your damage and accuracy by 0.5% when equipped with an additional 1% for the full set, totaling a plus 2.5% increase in both damage and accuracy. You generally see people using the set with a Scythe of Viter against we uh, enemies weak to crush, trading off low defense for hefty damage output. But where is the mace? While the mace is a strong weapon, it's staggeringly expensive at more than 275 million GP, and its damage output simply doesn't make up for the cost. You'll hear later about how we plan to adjust the Nightmare drop rates to make her un uniques more obtainable, but for now, here's, what, here's how we're giving the mace some extra juice. While using the Inquisitor's mace, damage and accuracy bonuses from the Inquisitor's armor, including the set effect bonus, is tripled. In a full set with the mace, the bonuses increase from plus 2.5% to plus 7.5% total damage and accuracy. This change should make the mace feel like a worthwhile stepping stone between the Abyssal Bludgeon and the Scythe of Viter, adding more utility to a rarely seen set. What are your thoughts? This is wrong. This is the most wrong change. Uh, I can't believe they're even considering buffing the mace when it's already very good. And it's the best. It's the best item from Nightmare right now, uh, arguably. Maybe maybe people will say Eldritch is better, but the mace is good, dude. Like people use the mace a lot. I I bought the mace on my alt, and I've been doing combat achievements and finding myself using mace in a lot of places. I've been using it for a lot of chambers. Like, dude, you're you're trying to buff Inquisitor armor. You're not trying to buff the mace. Like, while this does indirectly buff the Inquisitor armor, j just make. The set bonus triple just by default. Why do you need a mace for this? Make it so, so you can use full inquisitor with the bludgeon and all the all the other crush weapons. Like just just make the set bonus better. So here's the That's it. I agree with that, except for one caveat, which is the scythe getting that treatment as well. Because as soon as as soon as the scythe is uh, scythe on crush is now getting a seven point five percent boost with full inquisitors, the scythe is going to be fucking wild, and it's not going to. It's not going to bridge that gap between the mace and the scythe, which is what a lot of people want. So, what are you worried about the scythe being used on crush for? Uh, like anything, basically. I so, mean, where would you use crush right now? It's like nightmare, obviously, Cerberus, Tecton. Is there any more? Um. Well, the thing is, like Tecton, right now you're using a scythe. You know, already. Yeah, you're already using a scythe. Cerberus, you're using a scythe. Fasani's Nightmare, you're using a scythe. And when you 
buff this, it's like no matter what, like in my opinion, I think it would be a healthy thing to let Scythe dominate more as a slash weapon. And it already dominates as a crush weapon because of Inquisitor. So maybe there could be some sort of change where, because I would love it if, I'm totally with you, by the way, where the set bonus should just be 7.5% with all crush weapons minus the scythe. And so somehow, I'm just thinking somehow the scythe can't be in this. It, it almost has to be like excluding scythe. And the reason I say that is because the scythe is just going to go absolutely wild with a 7.5% increase because it's just... It just it, I don't know. Like, I, I just think it's too OP for the Scythe to get that treatment as well. But I don't think it's enough to just have the Mace have the treatment because it would be really cool to, you know, be able to use an Elder Maul or a Bludgeon or a Zombie Axe or whatever with uh, the full ink and get that same 7.5%. So I don't know. I don't know what, I don't have an idea on the top of my head right now of how to exclude the scythe from that, but I think it is important to exclude the scythe from that. Almost like maybe, maybe that 7.5% only gets applied if the main or if the highest attack uh, bonuses from that weapon are crush based. So because the scythe has a higher slash bonus than crush, it's not going to get applied. But any weapon that's primarily used for crush gets that bonus. I know that sounds a bit convoluted, but I think that would be the way to go about it. So uh, I don't mind. I don't mind the ink armor being and the scythe being buffed. Uh, this is this is where we just have this, the same differing opinion. And I talked about this earlier, where mm -hmm. you, uh, yeah, you you like to have things be kind of like competing all against each other even when it comes to the scythe and the mace competing against each well, other it's only because the scythe is literally supposed to be a slash weapon like and, and i understand that's exactly proving your point but i do think it's important for there to be some competing things um some some competing weapons that are competing with the scythe like i just think that's important for health so I know I'm you, you see you see the scythe uh, competing against the mace, and then all I can I can't help but think about the scythe competing with the Tebow and the shadow, and there being this linearity between raids one, raids two, raids three, where they each have a style weapon, and then the scythe is definitely the weaker of the three by comparison. So I don't mind the scythe being like giga strong even on the crush style. If it really bothered you that much, maybe the crush option on the scythe should just be deleted. That's what I, I think. think. That's yeah, probably I think the best thing for the game, really. I, I, uh, it doesn't even make sense for it to have crush, but we're already so used to it. But yeah, that yeah, would be amazing to just get rid but, of that. But I, I, I'm, I don't mind the crush style. Uh, I, I think the scythe actually needs more love, and I'm glad that they buffed it recently. I just I just think the scythe should maintain its value and be giga strong, mega rare from arguably what I would say is the best raid. I think TOB is the best. It's also the most difficult. Well, maybe not more difficult than like uh, 500s or 600s TOA, but, but yeah, that's that's like a different topic entirely. But yeah, we just have different opinions on this, and I don't think either of us are going to really change where we no, see mean, mega raids really in different ways. I mean, I'm willing to concede certain points. The thing is, is like, I just don't want, it's just the same thing with Scythe or with Tebow. Like if, if Tebow was the go-to ranged weapon for everything, it would just be so dumb. Like, what the fuck? Like, why are we, like, we, we need some sort of, we need a blowpipe. We need some sort of other weapons that can fill other niches and i just think the scythe being overly dominant every single place just because it's a mega rare is just stupid i i also think the shadow was way too overtuned personally and it could have been a bazooka like it currently is but have some sort of potential downside where if something you know may i don't know i'm not going to go into this whole thing but the shadow was way too op because you literally are trolling now if you're not using a shadow 
every time I put the shadow in a DPS calculator, it, it just says, yes, use this. Yes. <laughs> it doesn't matter where, like, I, I was using it to see if it was better than Tebow on stuff like Mystics and Shamans. And every time I put it in, I just see 85, 90, 95% mage accuracy, yeah. max attack roll, like 100k, just crazy it's, it's, high it's accuracy. Wild. It's, Dude, it's, it's busted. Like, people are using... Okay, you know what's liberating is going into vanguards in a regular like solo chambers, and you just kill them all with shadow. That's that's the, all you do. You just Wild. oh, this one's the lowest. I click this one. Yep. It's just just like holy it's just, moly, it's just so fucking accurate. It's so fucking. It is accurate. very unbalanced, but it is very satisfying to use. It is very very yeah. satisfying. Way more satisfying than any other mage weapon. Before, if I splash twice in a row on the Mage Claw at home, I'll just be upset. Or, or rather, I won't be upset, but I'll just be like, okay, well, it's, you know, uh, that happens every so often or whatever. If I splash twice in a row with Shadow at home, I'm like, dude, I'm so unlucky. I hit the, the negative lottery on these hits. I'm just, I'm so upset. Uh, yeah, it really goes to show how accurate the Shadow is. It, that, that thing just does not splash. It really doesn't. It's crazy. Um, yeah, so let's... There, there's more to talk about because the, there's going to be some minimum hit thing we're going to talk about, which I do have a problem with how they've addressed it, but we'll cover that in a second. Void Waker. Okay, have you used the Void Waker? Because you haven't played it. I'm using it all over the place, yeah, for sure. So, uh, it's very satisfying, just always hitting. Okay, when we first said this crazily consistent special attack weapon was on the table for Project Rebalance, we said we wanted to tweak it because completely bypassing accuracy checks in combat could become a limiter for future spec DPS weapons. So although we're still presenting our proposed changes today, we're aware that this is something many of you have spoken out against and will continue to bear your feedback in mind. Our proposal looks like this. Adjust the Void Waker special attack so that it no longer ignores accuracy, but instead rolls with plus 200% increased accuracy and rolls against your target slash or magic defense, depending on which is lower. So, I think this is a good... Well, here, let me just finish up, and then we'll talk. This means the special attack will st or still rolls with triple accuracy, and picks the lowest of two values, so you always have the best odds of hitting. It fits nicely with the Void Waker's melee, but magic identity. It also keeps it an incredibly consistent choice in both PVM and PVP scenarios without being so consistent that it bypasses one of our main balancing levers. We're especially keen for your thoughts on this one, so get in touch with us and let us know. Personally, I'm going to share my thoughts first. I think this is great. I think it is important for things to not have an absolute 100% guarantee. In some, in, in some situations, I do think it's warranted, but here... I think uh, it's okay for it to just be like claws where like you're almost certain it's going to hit, but you're not absolutely getting that full guarantee. Um, I'm, I remain slightly indifferent, but I actually like that they're going down this road because with monsters that really should be immune to uh, like a certain style and having a Void Waker bypass anything you ever do in the future to like future bosses, I think it is a bit weird. So... That's my personal take. What are your, what are your thoughts? But it's still going to be hitting basically guaranteed. And it's going to still hit the 50 to 150%. Uh, it's a pretty damn. substantial nerf for Nex. This is a very substantial nerf for Nex. Mm. Uh, Void Waker is going to splash on Nex a lot. Uh, really? Even with 300%? Well, because Nex is like indestructible to Mage basically. And also Slash because it's weak to stab. And Nex's defenses are just super high in general. This I is see. This is a huge nerf against Nex. I haven't done any calcs, but I can imagine that you're going to hit so many zeros if you try to use Void Waker at Nex now that you're just you're just going to fang spec now, probably. Maybe. Nah, nah, no way, no way. You would never fang spec in the first place. I feel like you would just ZCB spec at that point. Yeah, well, true, true. You would you would definitely use ZCB over fang spec for sure, but. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a pretty big nerf. I thought the whole reason you, people used Void Waker over Claws was just because it always hit. So if you take that away, then it's like, why wouldn't you just use Claws everywhere? Yeah, but I'm, I'm sure there'll still be places where Void Waker is better. Yeah, no, no, I and I guess really, I I I just want to make it a bit more clear. I am indifferent on this. So if they were to revert this change, they said they're still going to keep our feedback in mind. If they were to fully revert this and just keep it guaranteed, I'm not gonna have that big of a problem with it 
at all. In fact, I would, I would just be totally fine because I feel like this change that they're making is basically already going to make the Void Waker feel the same. Um, For the most part, at a lot of places, yeah, yeah. I would say so. Yeah. It's still two, like two hundred percent accuracy is is just crazy. Yeah, we'll see. And it's going off of its lowest stat, so whatever is the lowest. So I don't know. It's whatever. Uh, I'm curious what people have to say in the comments. But let's continue. Ancient God Sword. The Zerosian spin on this classic melee weapon is designed from the ground up for PvP. Although it does see use in PvM, especially against slash weak monsters where long trips are preferred. It's uh, all about outlasting your opponent, which still, while still packing a punch, excuse me. In special, it's special, Jesus, it's special attack blood sacrifice increases your max hit by 10% and upon a successful hit marks your target. If they don't move at least five tiles away after eight ticks, 4.8 seconds, they'll take 25 magic damage and you'll heal for the same amount of HP. If your, if your PVP opponent is frozen and you hit them, for even a measly one damage, you'll ultimately wind up with a 50 HP differential. The damage isn't mitigated by protect from melee or magic, so there's actually very little your opponent can do about, that, about it. Is that fun? To even the odds, we want to reduce the healing provided in PvP without reducing the God War God Sword's um, already limited utility in PvM scenarios. Healing from successful blood sacrifice now heals for 15% of the target's maximum HP up to a 25 HP cap. So basically across the board for basically 99% of PVM situations, this remains completely unchanged because you're still gonna heal for that 25 um, damage because basically everything you're killing is gonna have more than 150 HP. And this still leads to a 40 HP differential in PVP but stops fights stretching out without counterplay even when your opponent is playing perfectly. The Ancient God Sword is basically unchanged in PVM, except in the rare case of fighting low HP targets, and it isn't really designed for such encounters anyway. Again, we'd really like to hear your feedback about this change. We're not committed to it, and if the Ancient God Sword's role in today's meta has changed, we're more than willing to leave it alone. So this seems very much just PVP focused, and I'm okay with what they're proposing. No comment, next. Yeah, I. it's whatever. Other combat adjacent changes. The rest of the changes focused on other aspects of PVM combat, such as drop rates. So Dragon Warhammer. Dragon Warhammer mentioned all irons to battle stations. This quintessential grind item is a staple for those taking their first foray into PVM. Unfortunately, it's not that common. Lizardman shamans aren't hard to kill, so the whole hours long adventure can also be quite boring which is why we're making the following change. Boost the Dragon War Dragon Warhammer's drop rate from 1 in 5,000 to 1 in 3,000. This is effectively an 80% increased drop rate, which we feel is better suited to a mid-game upgrade required to chase more challenging uniques. Now, we don't often adjust drop rates, and we don't plan to make it a habit, but for the Warhammer and a few other persistent offenders, we're making an exception. What do you think? I would go further and make it 1 in 1K. <laughs> Like I make mean, this it's, thing way more common. Yeah. This grind is stupid. Yeah. This, this is the one of the worst parts of the game right now. This this shouldn't exist. This should be one in a thousand, like at most. I'm, one in five k was egregious. <laughs> yeah, it was. But I I I like that they're not completely going crazy on this. I think you know one in in my opinion, I think one in twenty five hundred is the perfect sweet spot. Just, just completely slashing it in half or doubling it, I guess. Um, I think that would be enough. And uh, I think one in, th one in 1,000 is just a bit too far, just personally, just my taste. But one in 2,500. So one in 3,000 is very close to that, and I think that's completely fine. Um, yeah, I, I'm pretty much just like whatever. Uh, I thought about maybe it would be a good idea to make it one in 1K on task, and then I realized... You know, I don't really like those on-task drop rate changes. It. Me too. I hate those. It Basilis, always sounds like, like cool. That. Yeah, it, it sounds kind of cool in theory, and then you're like, bro, you're already getting a buff by being on task. Like, yeah, exactly. Doing more damage. Like, why? Why were you gonna just? It just feels like a severe punishment now to try to grind the item off task. That's what it feels like. So I hate that kind so, of stuff. 
Yeah, this is a good change. One in three K, much better. Uh, I would I would like to see it one in one K, mm -hmm. but uh, that's just me. Especially now that it's not even going to be the best in slot uh, defense reduction because Elder Maul will be better now. Yep. So making it more accessible is is huge. I think this would be an awesome iron grind if it was one in one K. You'd see people killing shamans before going to corrupted gauntlet, maybe you, like you, killing them with like rag gear. You know, instead what, of a bofa. You know, it'd be really cool. Is if let's hear it. the if is if you could also get a dragon war hammer from within side chambers killing shamans. Oh, uh, you, you know what? I'm surprised it's not like that. I know. It's stupid. But it would it, it would be it, like balance wise, it would completely delete any purpose of killing shamans on a main because the warhammer would be so cheap if it came from chambers just randomly. You know what? Make it not maybe really. make it there's just only like, like one. In, there's only Maybe. ever like two shamans in a solo so it's like you'd still have to do like 1500 fucking raids to pull it's a hammer. true but they would leak into the game um but in they're a not way even that... important now because the elder mall is more important yeah, the the price of the thing would would plummet big time. But mm. maybe make it a one in three two seven sixty eight from shamans and inside raids. That would be interesting. But just as like a meme drop, in the sense that like the onyx from Tecton is a meme drop that's very rare. I don't even think it's. I literally think it could be the same drop rate because the shamans inside the raid are always way harder anyway. Like yeah, but you're not longer. killing them for the hammer, but by any means, you're killing it for the other uniques. But how cool would it be? To get an onyx from Tecton, you're in the raid, and then get a Warhammer, and then get a fucking purple chest. Like how cool that would also, be. Also, yeah. think of it this way: where people are going to suddenly start scouting for raids that only have shamans because of the Warhammer drop. But no, 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 no. They won't be doing that. Like, in, and they the wouldn't. supply and demand will equal out. So at eventually, at some point, it's just going to be like whatever. Because, I mean, the other thing is like, who the hell is scouting for like, oh, I want Tecton for that rare chance of an onyx, like. Okay, Onyx is a lot different than the Dragon Warhammer. I just like, think it's a I pretty think, big difference. I, I think doing, I think this will just be an overall excite, a slightly exciting thing to add to chambers because it's going to be such a rare thing. You maybe see one Warhammer in fifteen hundred fucking raids of yours, and again, this is assuming solos. If you're doing groups, maybe there's four shamans in the room. And then the coolest thing is like whoever did the most damage to that shaman that drops the warhammer gets the warhammer and it's fucking exciting. It's like oh, holy shit, you know. <laughs> I think it's just overall just fun, and I don't think the market's gonna even see that big of a difference anyway. I think it's totally fine, personally. Okay. My personal take. Anyway, we'll continue. Um, the Nightmare and Fasani's Nightmare. These bosses are tough and their uniques do the heavy lifting in terms of rewards. However, these uniques are so rare that players don't feel either variant of this beastly boss uh, is worth, or don't feel either variant of this beastly boss worth their time, is worth their time or their supplies. To add to this issue, the Nightmare's uniques are mostly niche or underpowered, which doesn't exactly justify their rarity. We've already spoken about making changes to the Inquisitor's Mace, and we feel adjusting the drop rates for uniques will provide the other half of the equation. Here's the specifics. So I'm not even going to touch the Nightmare. We're just going to cover Fasani's because nobody's touching the Nightmare. Fasani, <laughs> Fasani's Nightmare is Inquisitor's Pieces plus Nightmare Staff Loot Table has a 1 in 150 chance to roll improve from 1 in 200. Fasani's Nightmare Orb Loot Table has a 1 in 720 chance to roll improve from 1 in 960. In short, all Nightmare Uniques are made 50% more common. We're conscious that this change may affect the GE value of these items, although some may actually receive a boost due to their project rebalance changes. We feel that these changes are important enough to go ahead regardless. However, if you've got thought about, uh, thoughts about either of the drop rate changes we've spoken about today, we'd love to hear them. Thoughts? Nightmare has been such a mess since its inception. What a okay the art design of nightmare and the the area where you fight the nightmare oh that is really cool the boss mechanics are, are really cool they drop the ball so hard on the rewards from this thing good lord the harmonized orb meant to be like the best mage weapon in the game and then it's just like the next step the next uh, update they release thralls and then all of a sudden you can no longer use mage on normal spellbook and then Dude, it's been such a mess, and 
it sucks that it's taken them this long to make significant drop rate changes because they were needed big time. No, the, the thing is they have made significant drop rate changes from the inception of it until now. Yeah, but it wasn't enough. It was not Dude, nearly enough. So it is still not enough, in my opinion. I agree. I want to touch yes, on this. It like, should be way better. Literally, like double the drop rate or even more than that. Yeah. <laughs> literally in my head, I'm thinking... We're making these changes. Jagex in there in the back of their mind. First of all, this is going to this is going to upset most players that have been grinding nightmare. I don't give a oh, fuck. 100%. I've basically 100%. Already, I don't care either. Yeah. I've I've basically I've done twelve hundred hours of nightmare. And I do not care if the place gets completely buffed so egregiously that I lose, you know. 900 hours I, I don't even care like just fucking make the place better i don't care so i am in that boat with anybody else that's going to get butt hurt over this getting a change and people that have been grinding literally this is not a big enough change because we're going to see another year down the line another two years down the line even a fucking week down the line from this i mean i'm already before this update's even implemented i'm already butt hurt this isn't enough like the, it literally is not enough we need to make a serious pivot and just say legitimately double or if not more. I would even say, so right now getting a drop from Nightmare is a 1 in 167 to get a fucking item there. You have to kill 167 Fasanis. If you go four times the rate, <laughs> you're literally looking at like 700 Fasanis just to see something. So literally make that 1 in 50. Like literally make it one in 50 like just straight up trip over triple the drop rate and that for reference was, yeah for reference next is one in 43 yeah that's so, a that's a number that you should probably consider a lot when looking at nightmare which is basically like when they released it it was it was budget next mm -hmm. and now we have actual next in the game so uh yeah uh drop rates should be significantly better or, i would make a mace one in five twelve from regular yeah. nightmare like just flat one in five twelve inquisitor pieces one in one two eight just simple numbers or, like that like or they could they could even do something like make it so the drops are one in 80 uh actually make it still one in 50 but make it so that um the orbs are dramatically increased in drop rates. Like the those orbs need to be increased dramatically. Yeah, dramatic. 100%. So, so the armor can be slightly more, but then the orbs dramatically increase in the drop rate. I'm sorry, just like fucking a dude. The fact that th with this change, it's still gonna be one in seven twenty to see one orb. <laughs> That's so dude. That's bad. Listen, that is so bad. It's so bad because it's still one in like twenty one sixty to get a specific orb. If you go four times the rate, you're looking at over eight thousand for Sonny's knife to get your specific orb. That is nightmare oh. fuel, and that's with these buffs. Oh. Oh, and there are man. people that go eight times rate. Can you imagine killing sixteen thousand for Sonny's? For one specific thing. This is this is a boss that you should only be doing like 100, 200 hours to get everything. It's ridiculous. They need to go so much further than this. I'm I'm sorry. They need to go so much further. Like literally. Yeah, 100% agree. They could. Even if. Okay. So, so I'm going to be the most conservative right now. Let's just say they keep what they've decided with the 1 in 150 chance to get the Inquisitors, at least with the orbs, make that also a 1 in 150 chance then, or something like that. So it all equals out to about a 1 in 100 for a drop, basically, or whatever that would kind of equal out to, but make the orbs actually feel like you're getting orbs. Because especially now with the elemental weaknesses, Harmonized Orb should be a thing you could actually get without just being like, oh, well, this is basically Third Age at this point. Like, seriously. The All right, orb what do you think about or blue table one in a hundred? Yeah, from I'm, Fasani. I'm, I'm I'm literally down for all of it to be like basically one in a hundred. <laughs> I mean, just one in a hundred orb table, one in a hundred ink pieces, nah, but, one in 
five hundred for Mace. Maybe that's too much because if it's all one in a hundred, then that's that shit's gonna be like a one in fucking like twenty drop or something. For well, I mean, I mean, like like an inv- an individual ink piece would be one in three hundred. Like ink helm, one in three hundred. The all the ink pieces and the orbs that have the same drop rate, so one in three hundred for all of those, and then the mace would be one in five hundred, so a little bit more rare. So and then the nightmare items? staff would be like one in fifty. L- l- let me just look at the. I'm just gonna pull up my collection log real quick and just look at nightmare. So there's. Actually, actually, I take that back. Maybe the nightmare staff rarity is fine because it is pretty good. It's fifteen percent mage damage. Maybe keep it like okay here, not as rare, but like reduce it, but not by a whole lot. Here's what I would say. So there's eight items that you're getting. There's full ink, mace, staff, and three orbs. So honestly, they could just make everything roughly the same rate. They don't need to go exactly that, but just over, just just completely simplifying this. If they were to make everything, like, I'm just trying to think. Hmm. Yeah, this, I, I don't know. May, not, I, I don't even think it's worth trying to. One in 50 for, for anything? Or like one in. I would love that. I would love it. If, I would love it if it was basically. So it, it would basically be the equivalent of like everything's a one in 400. Pretty much, but they don't need to do that. They would have to make some sort of minor adjustments to make the staff slightly more common because you do yeah. want to get those. So, but something around that where like nothing is really above the like five hundred thing. No, nothing yeah, specifically agreed. is above like five hundred. Agreed. Yeah. So something like that. I'm not. I could go into more detail in a future ramble where I actually write things down, but literally it does not need to be that crazy like we're, we're we haven't made oh also i need to touch on the jar of dreams <laughs> dude the jar of dreams <laughs> is one in four okay listen 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 to this it's one in four thousand so imagine a guy that goes 10x rate of a jar of dreams Forty thousand fasani's nightmare to get yeah, one collection you can tell- Okay, first of all, okay, ten yeah. X is a yeah. lot. Like it is, dude, but it happens. It happens to like w- the one unfortunate dude who's just cursed. Yeah, but no, but that that for literally the will of happen. People, they're not going to go ten X dry. Like, there's no shot. Well, they're just never going to get it. It's yeah. possible. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. Let's just okay. Even even two X eight thousand. Yes, there. it's it's absurd. Yes, it's completely absurd. 2x is always uh, that's so common. Oh, and uh, I want to also mention because you just when you first mentioned Nightmare and Fasani's Nightmare, you're like, okay, let's just skip over the regular Nightmare. But I think that's a little unfair. I, I think if you're five manning Nightmare, you should be getting items pretty often. Maybe, oh, like, yeah, it no, should no. be like really comparable to Fasani's if you're doing like sweaty Dude. five mans. Dude, I'm like incentivize people to get together for a group boss for for crying out dude, loud. Have you killed normal nightmare though? I don't I don't think you remember how much of a shit show that thing is. Like they didn't even make the, they... my Iron Man. I did fifteen hundred solos. <laughs> so, yeah, not good. I know. And you know what? 3, I never 000. got me. I yeah. never got the me. I did three thousand. Never got a mace either. F in the chat for the Iron Man BC Guppy. He's gone. Fucking in the bin. So triggering doing that content. Listen. They could make some amazing changes to um, Normal Nightmare, but honestly, this is my thoughts on it. Why not? This might come out as kind of harsh, but seriously, <laughs> why not just entirely remove Normal Nightmare and put Fasani's in the middle of that arena where Original Nightmare is? So just entirely remove that like extra oh, pool. And then that you extra could do money. it as a team if you wanted and to. And then you could do it as a team. Yes. Up to five oh, people. I like that. You I like go that into a lot. It's the same scaling and everything. So you're just annihilating this thing. And it's the same drop rates across the board. But you can do it with teams. So you're still better off doing it solo. Simply because of respawn times and other things. But you can still go in there with teammates. And have a good time if you wanted. Honestly. Like why not just. Or, you should or, have the yeah. ability to go in with a team. And have a good time. Because right now you're trolling. If you're trying to do Nightmare for, for anything other than CAs. Or and like. Just just don't yeah, touch it's... the scaling though. Because as soon as Jagex starts messing with scaling. And it fucks everything up. And it just makes it so soloing still way better. Like just don't even. Yeah. Don't touch anything with the scaling. Make it so you go in there. Just annihilate this thing with a team. If you wanted to. And have a way better time. Exactly like Nexus. Yes. 
exactly but where there's no scaling other than maybe like if you want to consider like the soul split part of next where it's healing like a quarter of its life every tick because it's hitting a hundred people next is next is kind of annoying with the null damage i'm not even going to go into this conversation actually because i just wrote there's, there's other problems with next, yeah but the, you're right yeah the scaling is an issue though uh, and i shouldn't be going to next to to like talk Say, about is, what yeah, your content is, is but golden. but make but. nightmare more like next in the good ways i suppose is what i should be saying you're right. uh nightmare should not scale with hp at all if you bring in more than five it should, it should not it should it have should. the same hp same drop rates everything like just don't even scale it what's the point Okay, yeah, so they need to make some massive changes to this still. It's not good enough. I'm sorry. And the orbs need to be significantly buffed, if if nothing else. Okay. Minimum hit adjustments. I already have a problem with this, and we'll talk about it after I read this. For those of you not in the know, old school's combat works a bit like Dungeons & Dragons. You roll once to hit, and then roll again to see how much damage you do. In the current system, it's possible to hit, and then roll, and then... Uh, roll zero damage. This is especially punishing early in the game where players have a lower max hit overall. If a low level player can only hit one damage, there's a 50-50 chance that they'll deal zero damage instead. Even in late game, when players are significantly more powerful, the potential to roll zero is always looming, and anyone who's ever whiffed a Dragon Warhammer special attack knows exactly how frustrating it can be. Previously, we proposed that any successful hit should guarantee at least one damage, but we still feel there are further changes required. The thing is, increasing either the minimum or maximum hit by X will increase the average hit by X divided by two. Um, we're actually increasing the damage output of every single weapon in the game, and this change would be disproportionately impactful for multi-hit weapons like the Scythe of Viter. As a result, our changes are focused on improving the feel of early combat, improving the readability of combat in late game scenarios. <clears throat> On hit, damage rolls between 1 and current max hit minus 1. For example, if your max hit is 58, your damage rolls between 1 and 57. This leaves DPS unchanged aside from the extremely early stages of the game, which should feel much better. We're also conscious that some account builds may be disproportionately impacted by this change. In response, we're looking to introduce items as uh, especially for these players, which will let them continue on as they always have. So first of all, just get rid of that shit. Get rid of the lower one max hit to add the one. Just who cares if the scythe gets buffed a little bit from this? I think any multi-hitting weapon is that's not even that big of a change to just guarantee yep. if, if it passes. So get rid of all that. Just make it so you can no longer hit zeros if you hit the accuracy roll. Everything gets a very, very slight buff. Scythe gets disproportionately slightly buffed, but it's just so fucking insignificant. It's like, who cares? And anything that's hitting twice now, like those new um, moon weapons, also get that same treatment. I, actually, I don't know how those actually work exactly. So I don't know if it's like you hit and then it just divides it already. I don't know actually. No, but Do you want to know what is absolutely sacrilege that they are trying to do here? They are making it so that Fire Strike can no longer hit eights. No more eights. Fire strike hits sevens. Do you have any idea yeah, how so bad stupid. that is? That's so stupid. That is that is like this you've whole, broken yeah. a law there. You, yeah. you got to go to prison for a change like that. That is so yeah, wrong. It's, it's so dumb. <laughs> that is bad. Reducing max hit by one. You you want to know the real solution to this is to kind of clamp off the way stats affect your um your DPS or your stats or whatever. Uh, so right now. It scales linearly from level one to level ninety nine. Where uh, it have you? Do you know how damage is actually calculated? Where it takes your level and then adds eight no. to your level to to get like a like something to multiply with your strength bonus. Well, anyway, so I'll, I'll just briefly summarize how the 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 DPS in this game works. So it takes your level and multiplies it by your gear, roughly speaking. So when it calculates your level, what it does is it takes your the level that you're currently at. So like let's say you're at 120 overloaded. Okay, so 120. And then it multiplies your level by your prayers. So in the case of piety, it's 23%. So it would boost your level, your effective level from uh one, what is it, 120 to 150. But then what it does at the very end is it adds stance bonuses and it also adds a flat plus eight to your level so what this means is if you're on the aggressive style you'll get three levels 
if you're using strength, for example, if you're on accurate, you don't get any strength levels, but you do get plus three in your attack level. And and this isn't multiplied by prayers or anything. So see this as your effective level being 153 if you're on aggressive and like overloaded with piety on and stuff like that. And then it adds the, the plus eight on the end. And NPCs get this plus eight as well. Mm. So you go from 153 to 161, I think it is. That's your effective level is what's happening here. So if you're not boosted at all, like let's say you're level one and you're on aggressive stance and that's it. No potions, no prayers, nothing. So what it does is it takes your level of one. It adds eight or sorry, first it adds the plus three from you kicking. Like let's say you're not wearing anything. Uh, your level goes from one it gets added three, so it's now it's four, and then it adds eight, and it's twelve. So your effective level at level one kicking is is level twelve. Mm-hmm. So what they could do to kind of like ease the gap in between level one and level ninety nine is to simply make that plus eight on the end, make it a lot larger. So make it like plus thirty or forty. So then that way the absolute like minimum level that you would have at level one would be like. It would be like 50 or 40 or 50 or, or something like that, where like you can hit tens at level one and then that scales linearly. And then if you were to just add plus 30 or plus 40 to the, the number, like the plus eight that happens right now, you would be seeing like way higher max hits at 99. I'm not saying to increase those max hits. You would, you would have to like scale the the way dps is calculated in a way where it's but, at the absolute highest ends it's reducing it but why would you increasing want, it at the lower ends but why would you want to be hitting tens at level one it's to make early game combat feel way better like you spawn off of tutorial island you get like geared from the combat tutor and then like maybe not tens tens is a bit high but i just you should be hitting like up to fives because right now you, if you were using fire strike at level 13 mage you're hitting eights yeah and nothing can really hit that high for melee range because of the way uh those styles work so if you were able to hit you know eights at level 13 strength i think that would be a lot more reasonable than the current like threes and I fours see. that you so can hit at most so it's just the balancing of the like those early strike spells personally I don't think it's necessary, mainly because um, there is some like give and take. Like magic in the very, very early is super OP, and then range slowly gets that nice buff over time because you're just rapidly hitting every three ticks, and you're hitting like fives very quickly. And they all have like actual increases, whereas magic damage increases are so few and far between. You need like actual like mage gear, like equipment. And then with swords, I mean, yeah, you're hitting ones and stuff, but that quickly, especially now with this change, if they do it properly and stop with the fucking bullshit of reducing your max hit by one, um, you're going to quickly get a new weapon that's like a, you know, rune scimitar, and now you're just annihilating stuff four ticks. Oh, well, I'm going to interrupt you here because because yeah. starting combat training at level one where you're like hitting goblins... But you're hitting all one. ones it, now, though. It's incredibly slow. Well, it's also reducing your max hit, so it, ultimately your DPS isn't really changing. It just no, 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 it's but, just made to be like a feel kind of thing. No, no but but that's change. but that's why I'm assu- I'm I'm under the assumption they scrap that bullshit that they just said, where they're reducing one of your max hits. That's the stupidest thing oh, ever. Oh, that that would also like it would increase dps early on but it's still pretty much required to do waterfall quests to get thirty attack and strength. And for the people who aren't like see this from the perspective of people who aren't really knowledgeable about runescape where they just log into the yeah, game I mean, for the we, first we can, time they know nothing i mean we and can then even they imagine know... a free-to-play world as well like just imagine free-to-play that's the easiest thing to imagine. yeah that, that's another good example and it would be a lot more reasonable to train your stats in free-to-play if you were starting to hit like at least fives with, with melee and range mage it's very reasonable a max set of eight with fire strike is actually really really good as you said it's like crazy op Especially when you consider that Jagex back in the day forgot to give things magic levels, so you were just always hitting your fire strikes. Right, hear hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. First off, I think it should still be the same. We we have to remember that when your when your max hit is one, again, this is all under the assumption that they get rid of the minus one max hit. 
um, just to balance it. They, they simply just make it so you, if you pass the accuracy roll, it's a guaranteed one. Um, you are, like, at, at the beginning, this is a literal double DPS increase. Like, just straight up double because you're killing things with zero defense in the first place. So you're just going uh. to be punching. You're hitting ones nonstop. Imagine they did this. Just hear me out. What if they made it so all melee, all barehanded or kicking is three ticks? <laughs> you really want two tick and three tick dude, weapons? No, 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 That's no. really funny. I'm just, I'm just thinking, what if, dude? What if may? What if barehanded across the board is now three tick? Like, what's the difference between just equipping an event RPG, though? I know. I, I mean, they they could, but like, how cool? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's. I, I just think that's totally fine, actually, just to be punching at three ticks. To be fair, those early weapons though are actually going to be just severe downgrades <laughs> because as soon as you, you know what to... you know what forget sailing. We all yeah. know Sebe wants uh, martial arts as the new skill. <laughs> I where, do. Uh, they're adding I judo do. and I talked about uh, that dude. BJJ, bro. <laughs> that, I, I that's love... what we really need. I legitimately was talking about that. I think with King Condor, um, fucking like just being able to have a uh, like a, a martial arts skill where you just go in and start ninja kicking <laughs> stuff. And like he was he was saying that apparently there's uh, maybe an RS three or some other thing. Like there's some version of that, or or maybe it was in dude, WoW you, or you something. Gotta, you surely watched some kung fu movies recently, dude. You you are no, no, you no. are really no, 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 interested I, in this concept. No, no, but 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 the thing about how cool, like imagine like a CG like a corrupted gauntlet where it's corrupted gauntlet, but you're not advancing your weapons. It's simply a training ground where you're butt ass naked and you learn to punch better and you learn to do like these combos and shit. <laughs> like, you just go into cool. corrupted gauntlet like yeah. John Wick, it, just yeah. doing all this choreography <laughs> on monsters. You, you go to a, the Dark Beast in corrupted gauntlet and you just go behind him and do a pile driver on it. Be, yeah, no, no, I mean, it, just one shot it with a with like some sick uh, Randy Orton RKO from out of nowhere. I, I just. I mean, it, it completely would not fit this game at all with how the current gear and everything goes. But I just think uh, even just minor things like just being able to punch quicker or something. And, and even imagine you imagine you had a um, a special bar barehanded, like a, a special attack barehanded where you can actually do a rapid succession of dude. Just do that. Actually, I am. I, okay, listen. <laughs> Keep everything four tick. We don't need to make crazy changes, but add a oh, special dude. attack to punches and kicks. Please just do that. Like legitimately give you a 10% to just one tick punch. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. Please. Okay, maybe it would have to be 25%. Oh, man, this is so That'd fun be sounding though. Dude, like it's listen, funny, but it's so fun. No, 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 no. This this makes perfect sense. Please. Somebody it just everyone open your mind to this possibility right now. Listen. You're punching things. Your special bar means nothing with punches. But now with 25%, you can one tick a punch or a kick. So you're, you're punching cows early game. One, one, one. All of a sudden, oh, hey, I have 100% spec. Let me just fucking do a rapid succession of four punches in a row in one tick. Boom, 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 boom. It's like, an, it's like a fucking oh, G-Mall, dude. dude. Let's, that would let's be sick. Let's target combos to OSRS where you just, you just like, you, go, you press uh, right down uh, or you go like forward, down, down, back to do a shore you can like Bro. just like quarter circle forward hadoken <laughs> no, just no, no. add no, 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 just no. add street fighter to osrs bro it doesn't even it doesn't even need to be crazy it literally just needs to be 25 percent spec when you're naked you can do a one tick g mall hit basically that's all i'm asking like that would be it's not op in any way and it keeps that early level training fun as fuck because you're just able to one tick your punches like boom, you know, like that. That'd be that'd be amazing, dude. <laughs> I don't but, think anyone yeah. wielding a rune skimmy hitting ammonite crabs is gonna take off the rune skim to spec with their punches, dude. I don't think they're gonna. I don't do even that. think. But I don't. That uh, it would it would be so in the early game. I don't even think it would actually outclass the rune scimitar. Because your punches are so shitty because you don't have full Torva and everything. Like as soon as you have a bunch of gear upgrades where your max where you, where your strength level is so much higher, then it's gonna count for something. But a rune scimitar, I feel like 
one rune scimitar is more than four punches. I could be... Oh, I actually, I might be wrong on that. But it, de it really highly depends on your gear. You um, wouldn't be, like, punching without specking. I know. So you would, would just you? do... F no, 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 no. I'm would you want that? What? Where you just punch stuff and you don't even use weapons. No, I mean... I'm just saying in the early in the early game, being able to punch things and have a 25% just like rapid punch, like a 25% spec to one tick a punch in between. So it would literally act like a GM also. It's it's not it's not increasing your cooldown at all. You're just getting an extra punch in if you have it. Um, it's so silly. It's hard for me to take it seriously. It's, it's very it's, funny. It's so it's just so cute. Like it's just such a cute like thing to be able to do. Like, I don't know. I just think that's awesome. I don't know. You it, know that term they used to throw around where they say it doesn't really feel old school. They used to say that all the yeah, time. I know. And now they just stopped. Yeah. We but just... <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't think specking with your fists, wearing nothing, feels old school. <laughs> to me, dude. It's Badass. just too lost in the sauce. Okay. How about this? 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 How about you don't get it at the beginning, but through barbarian training. I'm you sold. Can, We're in. Okay, barbarian training needs that. I'm sold. That's, it. that's need all you that. need to say. Yeah. Barbarian training. There we go, dude. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Just uh, you know, like you go do it. <laughs> I can't wait for them to add this, and then that you know that combat achievement where you have to kill Vorkath with your fists. Yeah, it takes like eight minutes. It's gonna take two minutes with your best in slot barbarian fisty cuffs yes. training in, uh, involved. Your God, imagine powers doing a two-minute so with, with your fisting power. Okay, <laughs> I, I, I would maybe cut that out. That, cut, cut that out of the cast. That's that's too lewd for the Sabe cast. <laughs> All right, let, let's continue this. All right, early game combat prayers. In other early game news, we'll be making changes to thick skin, burst of strength, clarity of thought, sharp eye, and mystic will. They may look like the names you came up with for the band you always wanted to start in high school, but they're actually the first tier of <laughs> prayers players unlock. <laughs> we'll forgive you for being unfamiliar with them because currently they're not strong enough to feel worth using. And much like your high school band, they don't stay active for very long. Here are our plans. Reduce the drain rate of thick skin, burst of strength, clarity of thought, sharp eye, and mystic will from five points per minute to one point per minute. Adjust Sharp Eye and Burst of Strength to boost your range and strength levels by plus one, respectively, if they're lower than 20. The drain rate sh uh, chain should be self-explanatory. At the levels, players will realistically use these prayers. They don't have enough prayer points to get good use out of them, and this change will fix that. The second change ensures that these damage-boosting prayers will actually boost some damage in some instances. For context, old-school systems always, almost always round down. So for a 5% strength increase to actually work, you need a strength level of at least 20. By that point in the game, players have often gotten past the point where they turn to these basic prayers for a boost. Adding just one flat level for levels below 20 gives these prayers utility at their recommended level and serves to demonstrate how useful prayers will be later on since it might be the difference that gives you an added max hit early on. Perfect. I think this is a great change. It's completely irrelevant to how you know I'll be playing, but it makes perfect sense and it's just good quality of life. What do you think? I don't know. I don't I don't really get it like It's just uh, making if, it so if, those prayers actually have a you could literally if you're if you're below 20, you're, you're just not hitting anything. Like you're just it, it literally is doing nothing. It's actually doing nothing. Well, like, if you start a new account and you get, like, a hookup of, like, 100k GP from someone, you can just buy 25 D-Bones on the GE and a burning amulet, teleport to Wildy, go to the Chaos Altar, use your bones on the altar, and you're just instantly 40 prayer. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying I think it's cool that if you start off... um. You know, like you start off and whatever burst of strength is, I don't even have my prayer levels. Is that like level three or something? Burst of strength? Um, I, uh, dude, it's, it's, is. I don't like know the, at all. The fact, that, the fact that you could be running around and just get an extra max hit just by one tick flicking that without having done any prayer yet is kind of cool. Like it's just a like guaranteed extra max hit just from flicking that on. So I guess, I guess reducing the drain rate makes sense, but it's just like why? I, I, it just does nothing to me. It, I know, I know, it does like nothing, but it, it makes it makes perfect sense why they would do this because it's not hurting anything. It's just allowing 
those it's not like it's a bad change it's yeah. just it's uh, to me it's just like why yeah why that's, are they even looking okay at these with it. there's just there's just no way they can make it like use usable they're just so garbage prayers and you get early prayer levels so fast just like fire strike a lava dragon as a new iron bury one bone your 10 prayer levels it's not that extreme but you get the point it's just so fast to, yeah, to yeah. like go past those um i don't know maybe maybe make the 10 percent prayers cheaper as well yeah they should do that so that across you, the board. you don't so that the, the the burst of strength doesn't suddenly like look a lot more appealing than than whatever the one is above it which yeah. is like like 10 times more expensive for plus five percent it's you're like right. not even worth it you're right they should so if they're gonna if they're gonna do this they should probably just do it on all the prayers that are before uh piety basically yep i'm also one of those people i'm not going to talk about it here well i'm not going to go into detail about it but i would really love it if they just combined all these melee prayers into one like the fact that there's thick skin bursts of strength and clarity of thought as separate fucking prayers is like the stupidest thing it's so archaic i know it's old school but nobody's using them in the first place so why not just combine them and make them all kind of like a piety thing it's like boom here's your here's your bullshit melee prayer. i would just i would just say release content where you can unlock a new prayer book and it doesn't even have that many new prayers in it it just it all it does is it just deletes all the garbage that you never use and then just condenses the prayer book into something a lot more usable. That's, well, we, are, that's, well, that's we already have that because you can already... Re I don't know if you knew, but you can already rearrange your prayers and hide them. Well, that's a plug-in thing. That's not in the actual game. Is it not? I thought it was in the actual game now. Wait, is it? Uh, dude, it's, it's so hard to tell what's what's Runelight and what's not. But uh, okay, no, so like, uh, it would be cool to have a cool new prayer book. But not to the point that they were doing with Ruinous Powers where it's just like, holy shit... There is so much going on. There are actually, if you right click the prayer thing, I don't know if you're logged in. Are you logged in right now? Oh, no, I'm not. Okay. Well, there's a filter thing now if you uh, do it. I, th I think oh, it is. is that like spellbook filtering where it's really like not great? It's not great, but I think you're right. It's like, it's like half of, half of it's plugged into the actual game and half of it's rune light where you can rearrange things and hide them. I'm pretty sure. Actually, I think hiding them is part of the game now, but I think rearranging might be rune light. Auto cast delay. We already spoke about this change when you asked us uh, about it following the NPC defense changes blog, so it shouldn't catch anyone off guard. Essentially, when selecting the auto cast option on a staff and then clicking the NPC, there's a one tick delay before your first attack actually fires. This makes it feel a bit clunky and also reduces your damage in scenarios where you're reducing and restoring your magic level or switching into a magic setup. Now that we're introducing elemental weaknesses, we want spell-based magic to feel nice and smooth, so we're removing this delay. Thank God. God bless. That's amazing. Yeah, nothing more to say other than thank you. All right. Theater of Blood, Verzik Phase 2. Solo Theater of Blood enjoyers have expressed frustration at the disparity between how Verzik's mechanics are handled in normal and hard mode. We're fixing that. If only one player is left alive during Verzik's second phase, only one Nilocus Matomenos, it's like Masomenos, uh, also known as Red Crabs, despite clearly being ticks, will spawn. This change isn't just for solo players. Should your team meet an untimely end, untimely end during phase one, you should now be able to clutch it out. Cool. That's fine. Doesn't mind. this make solo top like actually doable now? Yeah, that seems it's, really huge. Yeah, it's amazing. It it makes. It I so think Verzik's gonna heal so much though. Uh, while you're like killing the the crab and also yeah it, it's like uh, Verzik's gonna use blood spells on you and still heal a lot so it's gonna be pretty slow getting through that last 35 percent but at least it's gonna be doable without tick eating everything yep and it just gets rid of that whole like 15 minute segment of doing nothing so this is extremely reasonable and and for the people who are going to say, oh, you know, you can solo top now. It removes the team element of top. And then I just say to you, like, all right, enjoy doing solo Nilos. Yeah, Have fun. Literally. Enjoy doing any any part of top. Like, soloing top is a fucking shit show. I mean, I know there's some oh, yeah. people that are just gamers and just want to do it all the time. But, man, like, I'd much rather be in a team. All right. So does egg. You still have to take it. Yeah, it's uh, this is this is a great change. It this is. is a very great, good change. 
Okay, Tombs of a Masket. I love this. Path of Atmakin and Baba. There's no escaping the dreaded monkey room. Thankfully, your prayers to the Menophyte Pantheon have been answered. Increase hit points for all style-based enemies inside the Path of Atmakin. These enemies will now always take maximum damage when attacked with the opposing combat style. Assuming you're uh, in a solo raid, this is how the HP values and max hits will shake out. Brawler, 25 HP and 30 HP, always max hit by magic. Thrower, 30 HP and 35 HP, always max hit by melee. And Mage, 20 HP and 25 HP, always max hit by range. Note that there are stronger and weaker variants of all these NPCs indicated by the two HP values in the list above. And the HP totals will scale with group size and raid level. At the end of Path of Atmakin awaits Baba and her extremely potent melee attack. Since we're here, we may as well take a swing at it. Baba now only hits for 25% of damage through Protect for Melee, down from 33%. This reduces the damage by around 24%. This should prevent players losing so much DPS to Red X. Although those looking to save supplies will find it isn't removed entirely. And that's that. Okay, so um, just real quickly, I really hope... Because I guess when I first read this, I assumed that every single monkey in the monkey room is now going to be able to get max hit. I, I feel like that's not actually the case, and I want that to be the case. I don't want it to just oh. I don't want it to just be the monkeys that have an opposing style, which I feel like are almost all of them, except I don't think shamans are on there, and I don't think the volatile no shamans no vol well volatiles you just yeah, you just want them to explode anyway explode. yeah uh the thralls but they are so weak and then it's like what Every else is there everything there's the there's the curse baboon yeah that's the oh yeah oh yeah the one that paints or whatever venom yeah okay yeah every single thing if, if they don't have an exact style i think those should also just be max it with whatever thing you're wearing honestly like, you should get a max hit. You should just be able to max hit them. Maybe it makes it too easy. I don't know. I'm not Dude, a Toa guy. It's, it's I just such... did Toa for the first time yesterday. Oh, yeah. That's that's a good point. It is such... It's supposed to be a fucking puzzle room. Nobody's dying there anyway. It's just a nuisance. It's just a fucking nuisance to be in there. Like, you're just yeah. sitting in there just waiting. Like, come on. Like, move on. Like, I just want to get done with this. Just make it so everything's max hitable. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, just everything's max hitable. Um, the ones that don't have a specific style are just max hit with whatever you're wearing. So you're always just going to try to choose the max or whatever needs, you know, whatever's going to give you that one shot potential, potentially. So that's my personal take on it. If not, it's just, I don't know. I just want them to make that as most streamlined as humanly possible, but whatever. Why and, is it that Nyla room is held in such a high regard? And then the monkey room in Toa is the exact opposite. How did that happen? Just because I, I think it's because Nilo static. Bob. Well, the, Wands are static too for the monkey room. Not not where they actually spawn from though. Oh, Just interesting. Okay. Yeah, they're not. They're always spawning wow. different things. And uh, I, I haven't, I don't have like the documents and spreadsheets on all this and they have made some changes, but I'm pretty sure even toward the end, there's like, just different actual variations of what spawns. Like sometimes you get like four volatiles and sometimes you get like a, a multiple shamans instead of volatiles. And it's just kind of like- Oh, interesting. Yeah, I don't, I don't really understand it, but it's just, and, and you got this fucking statue in the middle, and you gotta <laughs> avoid the paint, and the, it's just, I don't know, there's just a bunch of, and and the click boxes on all these things are fucking microscopic, so you're misclicking all the time, having to fix these stupid pillars and vents. I don't know, it's just, it's just dumb. And the whole time, you just want to get to Baba. It's just like, yeah. Come on. Anyway, so then they say, and that's it. As always, we're excited to hear your thoughts and feedback regarding everything we've discussed today. We're making these changes to relieve the most common frustrations you've told us about, and we believe they'll uh, they'll massively improve progression and safeguard old school's future. A huge thank you again to everyone who's provided feedback so far. No doubt we'll, be, we'll get back or we'll be back to discuss it further. See you soon. Uh, any final thoughts? on this whole thing yeah they're doing they're doing great i trust jagex very much more so than i used to to make good changes i think they're being a bit too conservative though they could maybe make some bigger changes 
rather than all these like one percent, two percent. I I think they could maybe muster up a bit more courage to shake up the game more rather than all these what effect these effectively feel like bug fixes to me like a lot of these like like uh nightmare drop rates being changed like that needed to be fixed ages ago uh drop rate for dragon horror hammer needed to be changed ages ago like th- these mostly feel like bug fixes to me rather than rebalancing rebalancing to me it's like where different weapons are doing completely different things because of buffs and nerfs and all that. And these are pretty, pretty mid. Yeah. All things considered, they're good changes, mind you, like they're they're going in the right direction, but they're not really being very polarizing here. They're, They're just making all these little tiny changes here and there that are very hard to notice or to look forward to other than like, I'm really looking forward to the elder mall change. That that one's the big one. My, my biggest, piece uh, there's three things that really stuck out to me and i'll just review those tldr is um inquisitor's armor needs to just be 7.5 percent across the board i think um agreed make it so the scythe doesn't get affected by that somehow that makes sense that's my personal take if it does affect the scythe it's just i mean it's i i actually still think it would be a positive change just because inquisitors just, just delete the crush style on the scythe yeah. i guess um it's better and then, uh, yeah, no, seriously. Because then that brings so many weapons more in line. Like, just ups a lot of those crush weapons to a good, stable point. Um, and then my other problem was the not, nightmare drop rates. Those need to be way more improved. Way more improved. And then the last thing was the minimum hit adjustments. Get rid of the fucking minus one max hit and add one to the bottom just yeah stop uh, that yeah do not yeah 100 those are my main gripes but yeah other than that great 